Okay, welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. And in this series of videos, we are working on the theory for chapter 10, which is about corporations, their paid in capital and retained earnings, um, which is kind of like the equity section of the balance sheet. Right? So um, in the last video, we had talked about how corporations are organized, where, uh, you know, to set up a corporation, you have articles of incorporation. That's the paperwork in order to set up the entity for the corporation. Um, and in part of that paperwork, we have uh, shares of stock that are authorized. Now, you know, and that's a fictitious number um, saying this is how many shares that we could possibly sell. And of course, that can be adjusted, but generally, you try not to adjust it as much as possible. I mean, only if a, a company gets to be real big, like Microsoft, Google, Facebook, where they start out small and they grow real big, you know, that those authorized shares keep on getting adjusted. But for the most part, most businesses set a number that's so high that they don't, uh, that the authorized stock never changes. And of course, out of that authorized stock, some of it is sold. And that's whatever sold is the outstanding stock. Then that could come into two varieties, common or preferred. And then when the company buys back some stock, that's the treasury stock. Now that's a high level overview, all right? Um, so now we're going to actually start getting into a little bit more detail um, as far as common stock and preferred stock. And as you can see um, on the screen, all I've uh, put down was issuing at par value, stated value, and no par stock. Okay, but before I go and explain that, um, I want to um, kind of like, uh, yeah, again, from a, a high level, I kind of want you to take a, a quick look at exactly how stock plays into different things, okay? Um, let's say uh, a company authorizes, I don't know, 10 million shares of stock. And generally, when they um, authorize the share of stock, they uh, they authorize it at a very low price, okay? Um, and let's say, um, you know, it in like last video, I said it was a dollar in order to keep the numbers simple, okay? But oftentimes, it's at like 10 cents, okay? Something really, really small like this, okay? Um, you know, that's when, you know, the stock is authorized. Now... Instead of making it 10 cents, I'm going to make it a dollar just to be able to keep numbers simple. All right. So, um, sh uh, shares of stock are sold, maybe let's just say 5,000 shares are sold at a dollar, right, to the major shareholder of, of the company. So, the major shareholder has $5,000 invested in the company. I mean, if he wants to cash out, he's going to get his $5,000 back. Okay. But let's say the company now decides that, um, you know, they're starting to grow and they're starting to expand and they need money. Okay. Now we're not going to get into IPOs here. All right. Well, maybe we should. Okay. Um, you know, the, if, if the this is when the the company stays private right now they can sell more shares of stock in order to get more money because remember when you sell a share of stock you're debiting cash right and then you're going to credit your stock whatever that is and we haven't gotten into the terminology for that yet but what you're doing it when you're selling shares is you're getting money and you're issuing a piece of paper that's all a stock is is just a piece of paper okay and you're getting that money in order to be able to use it in your business as you see fit, right? So um, the only catch when you're private is, is that you have to make sure that you want, you know, that you own more shares, okay, than somebody else, right? You know, the way you do that is, is you don't take, you know, every time you have profit, you don't put that profit you don't take that profit out of the business. You keep putting it back into the business. And our tax codes, from a tax perspective, um, they want you to keep on investing the money in the business. So you start out here, you make some money, it comes around, they want you to put it back into the business. Okay, and then and that gives you more money in the business to allow the business to grow larger and to grow larger. And 
because you're putting the money back into the business instead of taking it out. But if you find that you need more cash than what, you know, for whatever it is, you can sell more shares of stock, okay, um, in order to get that cash. But you don't have to shell, sell shares of stock in order to get money in the business. You can do things like floating bonds, which we discussed in a previous chapter, okay. Um, you could go out and you could just, you know, uh, ask people for money, you know, have them be just indiv individual investors without actually buying stock, okay. So you don't have to give up control of the company, um, you know, if you need more money and you don't have enough of it, you go out and get a loan, you know, uh, from a bank, you know, to get money. I mean, there's a lot of different avenues in order to get money. And, but the whole point being here is that when you're private, you want to make sure that you maintain that, um, uh, you want to maintain control over the business. Now, if you decide to go public, all right, that's where an IPO is set up, all right? That's called an initial public offering. And basically, when a company grows to the point where they want to go public, that's when the owner of the business, that's their goal because that's where they make tons of money. Because remember, they're buying stock at a dollar a share, okay? And when they go public, they may be selling it to the um, at $30 a share. So, you know, for they're going to own as many shares as they possibly can and they're going to get that increase and the public is going to be buying that uh that money at uh buying those shares at thirty dollars okay and who are they buying them from you know you <laughs> okay so um you're making that you know that huge amount of money all right now that money should be invested back into the business but you know um you know the value of that share you know, it says if you want to cash out, you're getting the thirty dollars, right? Whereas the cash that comes in, you know, goes in and does for renovating, buying new equipment, expansion, whatever it is, right? So now that those shares of stock are here at thirty dollars, um, and on a, you know, let's this is a price chart, okay? Um, this is so that the price of the share. Um, starts out an IPO at $30, okay? And if the price of the share goes up, you're making more money. If the price of the share goes down, obviously you lose money. And so it's now what happens is these shares are in the secondary market where people are buying and sh selling just like, you know, you, you see every day on the news with Google and Apple and, uh, you know, Microsoft and Facebook and Caterpillar and, you know, all of these here companies where they're publicly traded. This is the secondary market, Okay, where the shares of those stocks are being traded back and forth. The company, when they had gotten the $30 a share, that $30 goes into the company. Okay, and those shares are now on the secondary market to be uh, bought and sold. Okay, now, the, in order to, um, the company can decide to go back and buy back um, some of those uh, shares of stock and when they buy back some of those shares of stock on the secondary market that's called treasury stock all right but we're not going to get into that just yet that's uh, for a little bit down the road but just be aware that um, you know that's you know the company can take back some of those shares and if they take back some of those shares that generally bo uh, boosts the price of the stock because there's less stock available it's a supply and demand kind of thing all right so um now we have these here shares of stock right um that we have authorized and we're selling them and there's two varieties there's common stock and preferred stock okay you know um common stock is what you uh, buy out on the marketplace in the secondary market Okay, you want to buy shares of uh, Google, you're, you know, going through a broker and you're buying common stock. Preferred stock is when is generally sold from the, uh, the business itself. And the reason why it's called preferred is because it is, it, it has first rights, basically, All right? The, and when it comes to dividends, um, you have to consider preferred before you consider the common stock and this is and we'll get into this a little bit later when we talk about uh, dividing up the dividends and cumulative versus non-cumulative 
But what ends up happening is, is when there's a dividend, dividend, right? The rights, the preferred stock uh, holders, they get first, basically first dibs on the dividend, and anything left over um, is given back to the common. And that's just an oversimplification. Um, like I said, it can get uh, the rules as far as dividing it up is individual to each and every company, and they they're as varied as the sand in an ocean. You know, um, it all depends upon what it is they you know the business decides to do. There's no set way of doing it. They just make the decision and say, okay, um, this is how we're going to divide up those dividends. But preferred generally gets first rights to those dividends. Okay. So when you're looking at and when we're looking at um, common and preferred stock, and we'll get into this in reporting in a in a future video, in our equity section of the balance sheet, you'll see preferred stock, and then you'll see the common stock listed. Okay. And these shares are what are outstanding, meaning that's out they're out on the market. They're not what is authorized. Remember, the authorized is much greater than the outstanding. Every time we need more money, we'll release some of those shares to be bought, and they become outstanding, right? And if we ever get to the point where we've sold, you know, the business has grown to a point where um, we've sold all of our authorized shares, we'll create more authorized. It, you just pick numbers right out of the air for that type of thing. It all depends upon what it is you're trying to accomplish, okay? So, with that said, when we're issuing the common stock, we have three types, par, stated value, and no par stock, okay? Now, the par value of the stock is what you decide when you're first issuing, like I said, 10 million shares at a dollar share. Well, that dollar is the par value, all right? Now, that may be the par value, but when I go to sell those shares, if I sell them at $15, right, that is minus the, minus the $1 par value, means I'm getting $14 more than the par value. That $14 is what is known as paid in capital. Cap, not X, L, capital in excess of par. Makes sense, right? Uh, the paid in capital, in other words, um, this is money, that's this $14 is money being paid in and it's part of our capital, but it's in excess of the par because our par value is a dollar, right? So that $14 a share is, you know, the paid in capital. So if I sold a uh, thousand shares, right, at uh, par, right, at a dollar, that's $1,000 as far as common stock is concerned, right? But by selling them at $15 a share, right, I have 1,000 times the $14 or $14,000 of paid in capital in excess of par, all right? Um, and that's um, how the will account for that and on your uh, balance sheet you'll have your preferred if you have any you have your common stock and then you'll also have an, your paid in capital account right in excess and that'll show the 14,000 here and the $1,000 uh, for the common stock and let's just say we don't have any preferred okay at this point in time so that's what it'll look like on your balance sheet okay so you have this idea of par value, all right, being what you're, um, you know, you're authorizing to sell that stock at, all right? That's the par value. And again, that par value is generally a very, very low number. And um, you can sell that stock for um, a larger amount. And anything over that is your paid in capital, right? You're not, you know, you don't, you don't uh, have a dollar par and sell it at a dollar. Okay, I mean, you could, okay, um, and that's what stated value is, okay, where uh, you're basically just saying, okay, you know, um, 
you know you're you're picking this dollar amount and you know it is what you know you're getting it at that particular price you're not going to have the paid in capital now um, if we have this as a stated value okay we also have what's called a no par stock meaning there is no par value on the stock and the best way to kind of explain this um, is uh, the difference between these three is to kind of go over um, when we're issuing you know common stock at those different values okay let's and, and I'll just use the example in the book okay um, you know there's 500,000 shares okay at one dollar par right so when we're issuing stock at a dollar par we're debiting our cash because we're getting the five hundred thousand dollars right five hundred thousand times one dollar okay um, and then we'll credit our common stock for the five hundred thousand dollars that's at par now um, let's say um, it's we're selling it at above par okay and let's say that um, we're selling it for fifteen dollars okay um, so we're going to sell it fifteen dollars right which means fourteen dollars is above par okay so th this here entry is when we're um, issuing it at par value but now when we sell the stock at fifteen dollars all right um, <coughs> excuse me we're still going to get cash and the cash um, is going to be the 500,000 shares at $15 or 7.5 million right so we're getting 7.5 million dollars of cash we're going to credit our common stock for the 500,000 okay because that's the par value of the stock right the 500,000 at one dollar par and we also have to credit our paid in capital in excess of par all right i'm just going to abbreviate here paid in capital and then you know this is uh, in excess of par all right and that amount is going to be the seven million dollars right um which is the difference between the five hundred thousand and the seven and a half million okay so that will uh, we'll put that paid in capital in excess of par as part of our journal entry okay because that's cash that we're receiving over and above right now um, let's say um, we don't have any par value no no par stock okay? okay and we're selling the stock at fifteen dollars you know just like um, you know this here fifth these numbers are all arbitrary to begin with okay when we decide upon a par value I can pick whatever number I want in this case we're happening to be using a dollar but I could have just as easily used 10 cents I could have used 50 cents right uh, I could have used uh, that's not 50 cents um, I could have used 50 cents I could have used five cents there's no right or wrong to it it's just an arbitrary number that you decide to set for your par value and then when you sell the stock if you're going to sell it for greater than par you know you're basically selling it based upon your needs if you feel that you you know you expect to sell X you know uh, 500,000 shares and you need seven and a half million dollars then that translates into a, a dollar amount of fifteen dollars okay um, and so you you know the you set that price at fifteen uh, fifteen dollars now remember we're talking about private stock here okay in a privately held company we're not talking about a publicly held company right if the stock goes out on the as is public stock then that stock ends up on a secondary market and it's basically you know what you see like I said in the quote-unquote what you're you believe is the stock market that fifteen dollars goes to the company itself and then that you know and that's what an IPO is right um, that a stock is being now at $15 on the stock market and that price can go up and that price can go down if it goes up to 100 
$100 a share, it goes up to $100 a share, but the company doesn't benefit from that because they got the $15 that they needed up front. The shareholders are trading the paper back and forth and saying, oh, this is what I think the value of that piece of paper is, okay? So just to make you aware. Now, if you, um, if there's an OPAR stock, okay, and we say we want to sell that stock at $15, it's basically the same as, you know, issuing um, the stock at a par value, except you don't have a par, okay? So you debit your cash for the seven and a half million, okay? Um, and then you credit your common stock for the seven and a half million, okay? Notice that this, in this case here, this is 500,000, all right? Because it's at a dollar at par, but when we don't have a, a par value, whatever we're getting for it is whatever we're getting for it, and that's what we're calling, you know, our common stock, okay? All right, now, I'm not gonna go over so much about the uh, stated value, all right? Because to be honest with you, it is, uh, stated value is not um, used that often, okay? It's almost like, why even have it, really? Um, but because if you're looking at no par stock and you're saying that the price of the stock is 15, well then, you know, you're, you can say, oh, I'm stating the price of that stock at 15, which is very similar to par anyway, okay? So um, uh, there's really not that much of a use for stated value. I mean, it's given a one paragraph uh, in the in the chapter, read that paragraph, and that's all you need to know about uh, stated value. The more important concepts are the par value and the no par value, and then the, this idea of paid in capital, okay? All right, now, the last thing I wanna talk about here before I talk about preferred stock is um, an idea, let me erase some of this here, is that you you know um, we can actually use stock to buy different assets. I mean, um, it's an instrument. Let's say um, you know, and the book uses the idea of a building. Okay, um, you want to buy a building, and that building is seven and a half million. Okay, um, instead, if you don't have the cash for it, okay. Uh, you don't have to buy the building with cash and you don't have to buy the building with a loan from a bank. You can actually buy the building with stock in the company. So it, to record it, you know, you're going to debit building because you're going to get your asset of a building and you're going to credit, you know, your common stock, right? And if it's a, a par value of a dollar, you know, that's the 500,000, um, because you're, you're going to give up 500,000 shares, right? At a dollar par. Right? So that's the uh, common stock 500,000. And then of course you're going to uh, credit your paid in capital for the um, $7 million, okay? And so now what you've done is, is you've actually issued stock in order to buy an asset, okay? So just be aware that um, stock transactions aren't necessarily limited to just getting cash for the, the business. The business, instead of getting cash, they can also get other types of assets. Because remember, cash is an asset, right? Well, if, I, if cash is an asset, why can't I buy other things like buildings and equipment and whatever have you? And if the the person who's selling it is willing to take stock for it, then you know you can give them the stock for it. All right. So uh, that's uh, a a little bit more of a look into common stock. And now let's just take a um, a quick look at preferred stock. Okay, with preferred stock, it follows basically along the same lines as common except you set its own parameters and again it has a first position right if you look at the example in the in the textbook um, they're basically saying okay we're going to sell 10,000 shares of preferred stock 
at twenty dollars a share okay I mean that's the um, uh, you know that's what they're going to issue okay so they're issuing 10,000 shares at $20 a share but when they sell it they're gonna sell it at 25 as preferred okay so what do we end up getting well we debit our cash okay we're going to have 10,000 shares at $25 right so we're getting $250,000 right because we're selling 10,000 at 25 10,000 shares times $25 a share gives us 250,000 okay and we're going to credit our preferred stock right and that's 10,000 to 20 dollars okay so that's 200,000 right so that's 10,000 at 20 dollars is 200,000 and the difference between the two is the paid in capital okay which is the difference between uh, between the two is the 50,000 so basically it's this it looks the same and it operates the same as common stock okay um, it, it acts and feels the same as common stock the only difference being is that for our common stock we had oops we had 500,000 shares right at a dollar par okay now for the same company I can come along and say okay I'm going to issue preferred stock okay and when I issue the preferred stock I'm going to issue the preferred stock of ten thousand dollars at twenty twenty dollars a share that's different from the common okay I can sell the preferred stock at a different price and remember the common stock we were selling that at fifteen dollars a share right so it's at a, a different price it's basically, you know, the concept stays the same. It's just a matter of the two different types. It's sort of like, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, ah, back in the day, um, Ford, Ford Motor Company had a called car, had a car called a Thunderbird. All right, um, but they also owned Mercury. Now Ford Motor Company owned Mercury, and Mercury had a car called a Cougar. Right? The only difference between the Thunderbird and the Cougar was the shape of the back window. On the on the Thunderbird, the shape went down. This is the this is the trunk. This is the window. And this was the roof. On a cougar, it looked like this. Roof, window, trunk. Okay, That was the only difference between the two cars. And the cougar was a lot more expensive than the Thunderbird. Okay, Same thing, right? but different price points and all this other kind of stuff. Different names, so on and so forth. And basically, we're doing the same exact thing here with common stock and preferred stock. Right, everything works the same. They're just named a little bit differently. But the only the important thing is is that preferred has preference over common when it comes to dividends, and that we'll get more into in our next video. So um, I'll. Hopefully you understood everything that I explained here about the common stock and, you know, about how we issue it par, stated, and no par stock, right? Um, how if we have a par value and we sell the stock for more. Now remember, we're talking about a privately held company. If it's a public company, that company ends up on a secondary market, and that's, um, you know, that's those shares of stock are traded uh, on the secondary market. The company gets their money, but that stock is on the secondary market. In a privately held company, what we're doing is, is or um, even in a public company, when the company gets the cash, you know, we're looking at it from the perspective of cash, common stock, and uh, paid in capital. It's that not, it's no more complicated than that. And um, 
the preferred stock is uh, operates in the same exact fashion as the common stock okay where we have uh, the par price we sell it for more and that would be our paid in uh, capital right so it's if go back and watch the video again if you're not understanding the, the different concepts um, watch the video read the chapter and you'll see how everything sits together and of course when you're doing the exercises it's a more of a matter of just you know making sure you know the of the terminology and you know which situation you're in as far as working through the problem but now we'll move on to dividends and discuss um, how dividends you know first what is a dividend and second how it applies as far as preferred and common is concerned all right so I'll see you in the next video